Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our taqueria. I'm sure many of you enjoy a good taco, a Taco Tuesday. Um, if by chance you're having a birthday party centered around uh, Mexican food, or if by chance you're having a occasion, a party, whatever it may be that centers around Mexican food, or uh, if you want to give a cute gift box for someone, maybe this would be great for some hot sauce or um, anything else that you know you might use in the kitchen to prepare tacos, and then your recipient can actually uh, use this as a little display piece in their home. I'm just gonna grab whatever I have here in front of me. Um, there's a couple of cacti or cactuses, whatever you want to say or however you want to say it, and we're gonna take the solid piece and tuck it behind the little piece with the cutouts like so. Okay, so we're gonna get that glued down. And I have a feeling that all of these projects with all these little pieces are gonna kind of create an opportunity for me to jab a little bit here. So I am looking forward to seeing how you guys incorporate these into your festivities, your occasions. I'm sure that there are hundreds, if not thousands of ideas that these can be used for that I can't even come up with. But uh, I think that I think that Mexican food is a huge, huge part of our culture here in the States and probably, well, I don't know if that's true, if it's all around the world, but um, definitely out in the Midwest. I know there's some parts of the world especially even in the U.S. where, um, well, you just can't find good Mexican food. I know my sister who lives out in Ohio, uh, near Strongsville, they have a, they have slim pickings when it comes to that. I live out near the Chicago area, well, further out west, but uh, there are so many wonderful Mexican places around here that I just can't seem to get enough. Okay, now in addition to the, um, in addition to these guys here, we do have little flowers that we're gonna incorporate uh, onto the little cactuses here. And each one is gonna take five flowers. The largest one here, which I'm taking and just kind of um, twirling between my fingers so that they're not so flat, I'm actually taking and shaping them a little bit so that the petals stick out. Um, those are the, the largest one here. Actually, you know what, before we do that, Let's just get them all out here so we can take a look at the various sizes. Honestly, if you put them in a different place or if you happen to get a small one and put it in a, on the actual cactus in a place that, you know, I tell you not to or I tell you to use a certain, I don't think it really matters. Okay, it's not a big deal. What I would probably do though is take and you can see all the little flowers here. I've got one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, and I have one in my hand. So I'm gonna to try to divide these up evenly as far as the sizes go so that each one gets, you know, one of each size. Okay, and these really tiny ones are, I'm still, I've got that in my, pardon my fingers, I was just inking, and it's kinda of hard to get the ink off. Uh, but anyway, the small one here, I've got, a t I've got a tiny one here. I'm just gonna put a little dot of glue right there on my little cactus and I'll pop that right into place. This is a good opportunity to probably use a pick-me-up tool, okay? And I didn't actually do any inking on these little flowers because honestly, they're so small, I don't think you're really gonna be able to tell that they're inked, okay? So if you have some tweezers, or if you have um, a pick-me-up tool, that would probably come in very handy right now to handle a tiny little piece like this, okay? And this is a new glue bottle. It's really kind of coming out heavy, okay? So you can see where the th there's three of them that kind of have one, two, yeah, there's three little ones there. There's two that have the shadow element of the flower kind of built into the cactus. So that's pretty self-explanatory where that goes. And then the rest of them, I'll show you where you can place those. Um, so this is the largest one here. And the largest one is gonna go on this little section that has the little dot. Okay, there's like a little little half circle or maybe three quarters of a circle there. 
So that's where we're going to put this large one. It's just going to go right there. And it just makes the cactus look that much cooler, I think. Okay. So don't forget to take, and I'm just literally placing it between my fingers here, pushing it down a little bit to kind of get it started. And then I'll take and kind of twirl it between my thumb and my pointer finger to get those petals to kind of stick out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just give it a little bit of life. The project will just look that much better. And then of course, the centers of these, you can embellish these with a little rhinestone or a pearl, whatever it is that you have laying around, okay? And um, here and here where we have the, the little uh, shadow elements of the flowers, that's where you're gonna put the smallest flower, okay? And then everything larger is gonna go towards the inside. So yeah, it's tiny, but you know what? It's all in the details. So it's totally worth it. It'll look really cool. Pop all these little details onto your project. Okay, got that one there. Grab the last little tiny guy. Kind of twirl that in my fingers. There we go. And if you're having a hard time twirling it, just don't worry about it. Just put it down flat, that's fine. It'll still look good. Okay. So of course I picked the I pick the elements here that require you to be a surgeon first, but hey, you know what? Let's get that out of the way. It's good practice for the rest of the project. All right, so now like the middle sized flowers here, we're gonna put one here and one right there. You can actually see there's a half circle here and there's like a little nub up on top. And that's where we're gonna put the two middle sized flowers on each of these. Okay, and again, don't forget to throw a little embellishment on the center of your little flower once everything is all nice and dry and set. It's gonna look really cool. I actually think what I'm gonna do, I'm sure that one of the kids is gonna want one of these. Um, I may actually gift this to one of my favorite Mexican places that I go to all the time. I go there all so much that they like know me by name. I might take and actually put their logo on the front of it. I think that'd be cool. I think they would enjoy actually displaying that in their restaurant. I don't need to advertise or anything. I think it would just be a nice little gesture. I think they would enjoy it. Uh, but definitely pretty cool for a little party. Or if uh, maybe you're having a, we've actually done this before, had a little neighborhood taco Tuesday where it was kind of like a, like a potluck Everyone would bring a little something. Could be kind of cool to, especially if you're decorating your place settings, have a nice, you know, Southern, Southwestern, I should say, feel or Mexican feel. It'd be kind of cool to use this as a little centerpiece. Or, you know, many of you have been making various structures from our website over the years. So this will be a nice little addition to your little village as well. Okay, so here are the two little cactuses with the flowers, and we'll put those off to the side and let those dry, okay? And in the meantime here, uh, what else do we have? We have, well, we can actually, let's actually finish up the cactuses because we've got some pots for them. And we've got this piece here and this piece here, okay? So the way that's gonna work is we're gonna take and glue this to the bottom of the pot so go ahead and get your glue going on the bottom of this. It's like a little terracotta pot. Throw a little bit of glue on there and pop that right on. Should be flush with the bottom. Let me uh, get that going there. Just line it up, make sure it's flush with the bottom, like I said, just like that. Had a little bit of glue squirt out in the center. Just rub that or kind of dab it with your finger to pull that glue out. I don't think it's gonna make a big deal if you let it dry, but sometimes it leaves a little bit of a, kind of like a glossy little sheen. And try to avoid that if you can. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. And this should be pretty dry. So now all we do is take and just line this up with the, the brown part here. So let's get our glue going on here. And this, this glue bottle is very touchy because it's brand new. 
That's why I kind of like when my my glue bottles uh, when they dry out a bit, it kind of thins them in, thin, thins them out a little bit inside. I feel like I have better precision with the flow. And I know what you're saying. You're gonna say that well, you, know, you can always get a different applicator bottle, but that's what it should look like when it's complete. So we can put that off to the side now, <clears throat> and we'll get the other one glued down. There we go. And again, just match it up with the shadow portion, the brown portion there behind the piece that I'm holding. Press that down. There we go. Okay, let's take a look and make sure everything sitting nice and flush, perfect. All right, so that's done. We put that off to the side. And next we can kind of put together uh, a few of the other elements. Let me grab this piece and this piece. Okay, so we've got this little, this little decorative piece that goes on the top of our building and that's gonna get glued down just like that. I did take this and uh, ran it through my tiny dot embossing folder just to kind of add a little texture to it. And most of these pieces have also been inked with appropriate colors. And when I say appropriate, I mean basically uh, colors that are slightly darker than the color that of, of the actual paper itself. So with the red, I inked it with purple. With this, uh, what color is this? This is a, uh, that's a dandelion, AC dandelion. I inked that with an orange, okay? So this piece is ready. That's actually gonna be popped out later on. Okay, and we do have a series of jalapenos and there's two green ones. And there's two green ones that go on the front. And then we also have two red ones that go on the side for a total of four. There are, uh, we have the main shadow layer here. Okay, and then we have the overlay, and then we have one more overlay that goes on top of that. So these are gonna go on just like this, and all these are the same size, so it doesn't really matter which one you pick. Just make sure that you grab the correct one as they go different directions. Okay, so we're gonna take and glue this one down onto the shadow element here, like so. Just make sure you get that lined up as accurately as you can. Just like that. Okay, I'm just gonna do the first layer on all of these first before we put the second layer on. And I have wispies from my applicator on all of this stuff because I was doing quite a bit of inking today. And that's okay. Just pull them off if you are having the same little problem there. It's not necessarily the end of the world. Okay, there we go. I've got the red one there. I've got two more to go here. So anyway, um, I'd love to hear in the comments what kind of tacos you guys enjoy eating or what type of Mexican food you guys like. I don't know if you guys are as obsessed with tacos as I am, but I really enjoy a good pastor taco. That's my favorite. I feel like um, I feel like those are the most flavorful. Those are pork, pastor is pork. And um, it's like every place does it differently. I talked to a gentleman at this, uh, well, he actually works for a music venue that is a sister company of a, a comedy club that I'm part owner of here in Batavia. It's called the Comedy Vault. And he says that, uh, I guess, in, in Hispanic culture, especially in the kitchen, everyone has their own what they call flavor when it comes to spices and seasoning. And that's why, you know, the food varies or the taste varies so much from restaurant to restaurant. So when you find a good place that has really good, you know, a certain kind of meat that they season, I think you kind of gravitate towards it. Okay, so the peppers are done. Uh, now we're gonna put the stems on, okay? And this is literally, these are all the same. So just get some glue on these. 
And I'm just going to dab that with my finger to thin it out. And yeah, we are working with some small pieces here. There we go. All right, so that one's done. And just kind of keep on cruising here and finish the remaining three jalapenos. <laughs> Didn't ever think I'd say that. I didn't think I would ever say that. Pardon my grammar. Okay. And just take your time. Like I said, if you have a if you have a pick-me-up tool, it could probably come in very handy. I'm doing these right now. And I've got two more red ones to put down. And then we can move on to the next part of our assembly. Really not happy with the way that this glue bottle is performing right now, but that's okay. We'll make it work. And if you need to kind of pick it up and use your hand to adjust this piece that we're putting down, by all means, it's totally fine. The cool thing is, too, you could probably blow this up real big and use it on uh, another project as well. Okay, there's my last one. We'll put that on and we'll move on to the next step here. Okay, so next we're gonna take this piece here. Uh, in our case, we have it green and we've got this little piece that's gonna be an overlay. And I'm just gonna glue that right on top of the green piece. So let's get the glue flowing here. And again, pretty small, little delicate piece, so go easy on the glue. You don't need to overdo it. It's just gonna seep out and make a mess. Get that lined up as accurately as you can on top of that piece. And again, it helps to kind of pick it up because you can use your fingers to just double check and make sure that you've got it nice and centered. So that's what that should look like. Perfect, put that off to the side. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is build the little walls that are on the front of our structure. So let's get these pieces out. I'll show you which ones we need here in just a second. And there are a few additional tiny little pieces for some extra little stones to give the wall some additional um, color, I guess you could say. So we need that, we need these two, and we have these pieces, and I think, I think that's it. Oh, you know what, we've got this little guy here. We should have one more like that. Yep, there we go, okay. And I think that's gonna do it. So we're gonna take and we're gonna glue these down. Okay, so this one is gonna go like this, just like that. And I really just kinda went a little um, random and crazy with the inking on this, just because well, we wanna give it kind of a, a little bit of a rustic look, okay? So that's kinda why I did that. So get your glue flowing on there. And I'm gonna glue that right down like so. I'll pick that up and move it to its correct location. And again, we also have, um, there are, you'll notice some markers on this piece. Uh, and I'll show you how that works here in just a second. In the meantime, we're gonna take this little trim piece and that's gonna get glued on like so. So let's go ahead and flip that over and get your glue on there. Okay, and press that down right into place. There we go. Just like that. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So let's flip that over. I also ran this through an embossing folder. This is uh, the Crackle embossing folder. I think that, yeah, it's Doris. It's this guy here. You can see that. We just did a, a live stream where we talked about embossing. So if you wanna learn a little bit about embossing, go to our YouTube page and check out the live stream about embossing. While you're there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as we endlessly try to grow our audience. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. And we'll put the little trim piece on and I'll show you where all of the little additional little stones go. Okay, oops, that goes like this, obviously. And just match that up right at the very top, should be flush with the top of it. 
That looks great. Okay, and now, so we actually have this little, this little piece here. It's gonna go like a little puzzle right into this little section down here. I'm just gonna put one little drop of glue on there. I don't think we need any more than that. And I think that if it doesn't sit completely flat, it's actually okay, it'll look pretty cool. Okay, so that one's gonna go there. Almost looks like a, like a little popsicle. That's the piece that I'm using right now. And that one's gonna go right in here, just like that. Okay, and then we have now, let's see, we've got this tiny little guy, and this tiny little guy is going to go right here into this little little puzzle piece there, like so. Okay, so I didn't even put glue on that, and it's kind of sticking already. Let me pick it up with my tweezers so I can actually get a little bit of glue on it. As I said, it's all in the little details, and you're going to have fun with this one. Okay, I'm gonna grab this guy here. So yeah, we're really doing some, really doing some surgery here for starters. And I think it's gonna get, it's gonna get less tedious for your hands as we go, we get through this project. Okay, so that one's gonna go there. And then you'll notice that we have a uh, little marker Okay, for this piece here, and that marker is right there. There's also a tiny little marker there that help, kind of helps you position the little cactus pot. So don't get that confused with the marker for this piece here. Okay, you'll see that that marker is right about there, and that's gonna add kind of a third dimension to this. We'll get that in place. And that one's gonna go here, like that. Press that down, and there you have it. Okay, so the wall is ready to go. We can put that off to the side, along with everything else. And let's see what else do we have that we can kind of go through now. Um, you know, I think that's pretty much it as far as the overlays go. Uh, there are a few flowers that are gonna go on the side if you want. Just like we did with the small ones, you can kind of take it and kind of just run that through your fingers like so, just to kind of give it a little bit of dimension. Just kind of spin it between your fingers like that. Okay, there we go. And we'll leave that off to the side. Now also um, at the top, and this is kind of what you would see um, on some buildings, we've got this little piece here that we're gonna put behind the sign it's not really completely necessary, but it is a cool touch, okay? And we're gonna glue these back to back, like so. And it's gonna kind of look like that, so that this side here can go up against the sign and this side here can go up against the actual roof. All right, so we're gonna take these and I want the, um, I want the, what's it called? The texture side out Okay, and we're just gonna glue these together like so, so that we, the two tabs are on the same side, okay? Just like that. And I'm just gonna throw a little bit of glue on the inside of one of these, like so. And we'll take the other, the other half and just make sure you get it nice and lined up. If you want, we didn't, you don't put any glue on the actual tabs, but we can use those to help us ensure that we've got it nice and lined up. So I just put glue on the inner uh, triangle part and then we can take and fold these back like so and this is what we end up with, okay? So we're gonna repeat that with this one as well. I've got my texture side on the out side, not on the in. I think you're hardly going to see this piece but it will kind of help keep the sign nice and upright. Okay, I'm gonna fold these tabs down. Again, I did not put any glue on the tabs. I'm just using them to kind of help me ensure that I've got everything properly lined up. I'm gonna fold those back. Okay, and that's what it should look like, just like that. And we'll put those off to the side, okay? All right, so now, uh, what else do we have here that we can do while we have things flat? 
Um, grab this piece. This is the little door that will allow you to kind of put a gift slash a, um, well, if you want to put a little light in here afterwards, obviously, we want you to do that. So we're going to take this red piece and glue it to the back of the brown section. And that's just to kind of give it, you know, a little bit of a, a two color sort of effect on the back. Just get your glue flowing on there. Just focus that glue around the perimeter. And then I'm going to use the little ball or the half circle up at the top here as my initial guide for placement. Just kind of running my fingers along the perimeter just to make sure that that is all nice and matched up. And that looks great. Okay. And let's see what else can we do here while we have this flat. Uh, we can grab this piece and we're going to grab our door and we're going to glue that down like so. It'll just make it a lot easier for us. So go ahead and flip that over and get your glue going on this piece here all the way down and a little bit here. All of the vellum that we're adding to this is actually going to go on the inside of the structure. So don't worry about this right now. This is totally fine. And just match that up as accurately as you can. Should be nice and flush with the bottom. Should match up with the little cutouts as well. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right. And next, <clears throat> another thing that we can do here, um, we've got some... Well, no, we can't do that just yet. We're going to grab these two little guys, and these two little guys are going to get glued right in here like a little puzzle piece. Okay, it kind of got stuck in there. This looks like cheese, sort of. And get your glue going on there, and pop that right inside here. Press that down, and we'll do the same thing on the other one. It's just nice getting rid of all these little pieces so that it's almost like a prefabricated structure where once we get the main walls up, the rest of it's just going to go in quickly, nice and quick. Okay, now actually another thing that we can do on this piece here, sorry, I'm kind of going, uh, going around in circles here. This piece can go on like this, okay? It's going to be nice and centered on this piece with a nice even border all the way around. So let's get that in place as well. I know, I'm sorry, I'm kind of bouncing around here. Okay, this is a little floppy, so just do your best. I'm going to grab it from this side here now. And if you do happen to get a little bit of excess glue on any of these parts, just take it and just kind of dab it with your finger to thin it out. But I think, I think I'm going to be okay here. I'm going to grab it like so and just gently pop it into place. Like that. Perfect. There we go. Okay, and that's just going to be the back of this, the back of the structure. It'll be pretty straightforward. All right, what else can we do here? Uh, we can actually, because this is going to go on like this, so that's already kind of taking shape, looking really cool. Um, there are some other things that we can do here. Let's grab the main structure of this piece and okay here this is the back uh yeah what is going on here yeah that's the bottom okay so okay so one additional thing that we can do here is we can put the side panels on which are these guys here okay and these guys are going to go on just like this um, and actually what you want to do is when we put this on now remember this is this is the top Okay, uh, let's double check that here real quick. Yeah, yeah, because you can see that there's a little marker there. Um, that's where a flower is going to go. So that's how you know it's the top. And this is also the top here. You can see the window shape. Okay, and there are little markers in the corners here to help you with the positioning of this piece. Okay, so we're just going to glue that down like that. The side of this needs to be flush with the side of the window. It kind of creates this like 3D sort of look about it, okay? And there's gonna be a little bit of brown showing at the bottom as well. So just make sure that 
you get that lined up properly. Just use those little markers to guide you and you'll be in good shape. Just get that glue going on this piece. Throw a little bit around the windows. Nice and easy. Go easy with the glue. Don't squeeze too hard because <clears throat> you'll know, be sitting there forever waiting for it to dry. And again, let's use the little markers as our guides. And then visually double check and make sure that the right side of this overlay is flush with the very right edge of the window as well. Okay, that's perfect. That's just how we want it. And now while we're here, we can take this piece and just like a little puzzle, it's gonna go right in there. Now take a look at this little piece because uh, we do have little markers on there and you can see there's kind of a shape of a jalapeno and you want the jalapeno going up like this. So it should fit the little guides there. Okay. What I should have said is the jalapeno should fit within the little guides. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Let's first get this piece in place. Press that down. And again, on the sides of the building, we're gonna use red jalapenos. And you can see that there's a little marker there. The tip of the, the jalapeno is gonna go there. And then there's a little marker there where the stem is. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit of glue. Um, you can pop dot this with you if you want, but I'm just gonna glue it down flat and just match it up with the tip as well as the little stem part. Now I embossed this, so it's not making full contact with the entire surface. Uh, so you wanna press that down a little bit more just to make sure if you emboss yours too. Kinda looks like it's smiling a little bit, which is kinda cute. All right, so we've got that. We're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. And as you can see, we're kind of really, you know, taking care of a lot of stuff here and getting it out of the way, which is nice because the easy part is gonna be putting the actual structure together. It's really not that difficult. Uh, essentially, it's just a box with a facade on it, like almost like you're, you know, you're in Disney World or something and everything looks very elaborate on the front, uh, but on the back, it's just very simple. Ron was joking with me that, you know, maybe you should Maybe you should quit working for Dreaming Tree and just start designing theme park attractions. <laughs> I was like, nah, well, we need you here, buddy. You need to hang out here with us. So I'm putting this down using the little markers as my guides on the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And again, making sure that the very edge of this is flush with the right edge of the window and that we have a little bit of that brown showing on the bottom. Okay, so that looks great. And that's going right in there. Again, make sure that the little markers on the jalapeno has it kind of going up. And there we go. Just like that. And we'll grab our red jalapeno. Throw a little bit of glue. Make sure you get a little bit of glue at the tip of the stem. Okay, and again, match that up with the little marker and press that down into place. Now the 3D flower, it's this little guy here. We'll worry about putting that down later. Since it's dimensional, I don't wanna, I don't wanna break it or rip it or anything. So we'll leave that for later. That's not, that's not a big deal at all. Okay, now while we have this main structure here, let's actually flip it over. Okay, and we're gonna put our, glue our vellum down. Okay, so uh, you've got your little vellum pieces cut out. All of these little window segments should be identical as far as the size goes, I believe. Yeah, it looks like it'll be fine. And we're just gonna glue these down onto these sections here. Okay, no one's really gonna see the inside of this, so it's not a big deal. And what I would do is I would actually just put, just you can do a thin little line or little dots around the perimeter of each of these little sections and just, it's, it's larger than it needs to be. Okay, so as I mentioned here, um, I've, got, I've got this vellum already in place, okay? I've got two more pieces to put down here. So again, um, you can do little dots if you want, just around the perimeter of each of these little cutouts. The dots will work just fine, or you can do a line, whatever you're more comfortable with. Just make sure that 
you actually get it in the right spot so that the entire cutout is covered with your vellum. You don't want any little gaps there, especially when uh, you know you get your little light in there. You want it to look nice. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Um, all right, so that's done. You can put that off to the side. So let's put together our little let's put together our little sign here. And I've got this piece. This is this piece is going to get glued down to the red piece first, and then that's going to go onto the green piece. Now there are some very delicate little sections on this, especially, well, actually mostly on the areas where we have the little letters cut out, like this little A and the R. You do want to try to get a little bit of glue on there. I would just put little dots on there and then just kind of thin those out. Just kind of dab them with your finger so that when we do place it down, we don't get that glue squirting out. And this should be pretty easy to apply on here because it's literally just a shadow element. It should fit on there perfectly. Okay, and just press down on those little those small little sections. Now I noticed that my little, uh, the inner part of my A just didn't sit perfectly. So I'll take a scrap piece of paper and just kind of run it underneath and put a little extra glue right on that little piece and press it down into place. Uh, my A over there looks good. My R needs a little extra love too, just like that. And then we do have, um, this is a little piece that uh, we need to apply manually for the Q. So just th throw a few little dots of glue on there and just get that nice and centered for the Q and press that down into place. Okay, so there is our little sign. And of course you can take this and customize this sign however you'd like. Okay, so once we have that, we're gonna take this and glue it down to this green piece, nice and centered. All right, so let's do that. Let's get our glue going on the back of this red section. And get that nice and centered right there, like so. Should have a nice even green border all the way around. There we go, perfect. So our sign is complete. You can put that off to the side. Now, one additional thing that we can do um, right now is take this piece and we're gonna actually glue it down right onto this section like so, okay? Uh, let me double check, yep, that's right. So let's flip this over and get your glue going on this piece here, nice and easy. Don't need too much. Just take it nice and easy with the glue. Make sure you get it all the way out to the very edges there. And then you can tell where it goes because we do have this section that we're gluing it to it has a shadow element for all of these little, little sections here. So get that in place like so. Okay, perfect. And we can actually take this one step further and we can glue this down like so. Uh, it should be flush at the bottom. Obviously you want to match this up up here, this little circle, okay? And then of course, just like on the sides, we want this to be flush with the right side of the window, okay? So let's flip this over and get our glue going. We've got a lot of surface area to cover here, so try to keep that glue bottle moving. Okay, and I'm working the perimeter first because that's the most important. And then we'll throw a little bit inside here and maybe just a little bit right there. I'm gonna use the little circle here as my guide for placement initially, and then the door, and then check to make sure that it's flush at the bottom. Give it a little bit of a nudge if you need to, and there we go. Okay, so that is in place now. <clears throat> All right, now once we have that in place, there are a few additional things that we can glue in place. We've got these little squigglies that are gonna go in here like a little puzzle. And I am just gonna do a few little dots of glue on this, very tiny little dots. And if you happen to get too much, just kind of hit it with your finger to flatten it out and kind of take off any excess. And just pop that right into little slots there. 
There we go. Just like that. And grab the other one. Same thing. Just go easy on the glue. Thin it out if you get a little too much. Pop it right in there. All right, so I think that pretty much covers all of the individual tiny little pieces. Okay, now what I wanna do next is actually assemble the base, which is made up of these pieces here. Okay, this is the main part here. And what we're gonna do, I've already pre-folded everything. You wanna do that before we get started here. And we're gonna begin by putting glue on just these little tiny um, triangular tabs here. Okay, and I'm gonna thin that out with my finger, kind of spread it all over that tab. We're gonna tuck that tab behind its neighbor, get those two edges lined up and press and hold. Okay, give that a few moments to dry. As long as you don't overdo it on the glue, shouldn't take that long to dry at all. You can also use your table, your surface to press down. Okay, and that's what it should look like, just like that. So we can then move over to the next triangular tab and apply your glue there, same thing. I'm just gonna take and thin that out with my finger, tuck that behind that surface there, line it up nicely and press and hold. Give that a few moments to set. And this is just gonna create a nice base for the actual taquera or taqueria, I should say. I don't know why I said taquera. Maybe I've been saying it wrong all my life. Taqueria. All right, and moving on to the next little triangular tab. Get your finger on there to thin that glue out, spread it out across the entire tab. Tuck it behind the neighboring wall, line it up, and press and hold. And that just leaves one more little triangular tab to glue into place, which is right here. And you definitely wanna take your time and make sure that these little tabs dry because we're kind of moving things around a lot here and we don't want them to come apart. Now, instead of trying to get my finger in there, just use a scrap piece of paper to spread that glue around. And just like the last three times, tuck it behind and press and hold. Make sure it's nice and lined up. And there we go, just like that. And there we go, okay. So now we're gonna take and push these little tabs down. We've got this piece here, what we're gonna do to assemble this, we're gonna actually anchor this to one side first, just to make it a lot easier for us. So go ahead and pick a, a long side, it could be this side or that side, doesn't matter, it's all the same and get your glue on there. Then I'm gonna take that glue and spread it out across the tab all the way out to the very edge. And we're gonna take this piece and get that nice and centered right out to the very, very edge of that section. And then you can begin pressing that down right along the edge. Once we have that in place, we're gonna kind of flip it down and press on the rest of the tab inside. Make sure everything is making good contact. Here we go. That looks pretty good. This is gonna be the bottom anyway. We're gonna put this on top so it doesn't even matter. Uh, and now to close it up, and you can see what here, this is kind of pulling off a little bit because there's a lot of weight on it and that's okay. It'll be fine. You can always clean that up later, but let's get our glue on the remaining three tabs on all of them. I'm going a little bit heavier here because I'm gonna spread this glue out with my finger and I don't want it to dry suddenly or too quickly. Okay, spread that glue out onto the whole tab, especially out to the very edge. Last one here, this side's already drying up a little bit. And then go ahead and close it up. Make sure you get it nice and aligned right out to the very edge here. The two shorter sides should just kind of fall into place and you wanna continue applying pressure right along that edge as it continues to set. I've got a little bit of a gap there. That was the side that's, that I applied my glue to first, 
and it was already starting to kind of dry. So I may need to clean that up and that's okay. I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Yeah, that side is gonna need a little TLC. This side is good. This side is good, but you can see there's a little gap there. But again, that's where our little scrap piece of paper and a touch of glue comes in handy. And you just take, and you can see the little gap there. Just tuck that in there, push it up against the surface, the inside surface of that section, paint some glue on it, and press that down, and just hold, apply pressure, very light pressure, to that little area until everything looks nice and flush. Okay, and don't let go. I just let go and it kind of popped back out. And that's okay though. We'll get it all looking nice and sharp here in just a second. Okay, and then kind of look around the perimeter here. And if you've got other areas that you're noticing a gap in, you can go in and clean that up as well. Um, it's a lot of surface area to cover. And I can't tell you how many times I've had to do this because it's not, you know, I mean, it's, you're only human, you can only do so much before this glue dries. You're kind of fighting, fighting against time here. Okay, and I'm gonna go around and just clean this up. I want my base to look nice and solid. What kind of a taco place are we gonna have without a solid foundation, right? Now, sometimes it's, it's dry and you can see a gap, but you can't really stick anything in there. So I actually put glue right on the very edge and just very carefully just kind of pop it in there and then press that down and that'll work. There we go, that looks great. And then I got this side that clearly has a huge gap. I'll just take the rest of that glue that was on there, pop that underneath and press and hold. Give that a few seconds to dry and we got a nice solid base. Now again, this is the side that we just put down, but the other side is the side that we're gonna be interested in because you can actually see that there are two markers here and that is the front of the building. So once we actually glue this down, you're gonna use that as a guide for alignment. Now, what I wanna do here is actually, um, I'm gonna grab some ink. I've got a nice gray ink and I'm gonna dirty this up a little bit. I want it to, I want it to look a little, well, I don't want it to look so pristine. So I've got a, I've got a nice gray ink and I'm just gonna do the top and I'm just gonna hit the very edges with this ink just to kind of dirty it up a little bit. I've got a lot of foot traffic coming into this place because they make some of the best tacos and burritos. Oh, another thing that I really enjoy at my local, actually pretty much everywhere I go is um, chorizo and eggs. I don't know if you guys have ever had that, but if you haven't, try it out. It's great, it's, um, I thought it was pork, but it's actually, I don't even wanna tell you what kind of meat it is, because you might get grossed out by it, but I really love it. I think it's really good. You can also put it on a torta. A torta is like a, it's like a Mexican sandwich. And they put a, it's almost like a Hawaiian bun. I don't know how to explain it. It's a really delicious little bun. They put uh, mayonnaise on it, beans. Sometimes they put guacamole or avocado on it. And then you can get whatever sort of meat you want on it with lettuce. I think they put some tomato on there as well. And I think traditionally, maybe not traditionally, at least in the US, uh, it's actually served with papas fritas, and that's french fries. Okay, so just kind of going around the perimeter here, hitting that with a little bit of ink just to dirty it up a little bit so it doesn't look so pristine, especially the little corners here. And there we go, okay. So our base is ready to go, and we're actually ready to start putting the main structure together, uh, which is actually easier than you probably think. So. Uh, again, we've got, this is the front. We're gonna put this on later. Uh, we're gonna connect these two sides together, okay? So it's gonna go like this, and that's the bottom. Okay, so we just need to line that up. Let's begin by just putting glue on this tab, like so. 
And we'll spread that glue out like so. I bet you any money that if I if I send my send my lovely lady a picture of this place that I could get her to start craving some tacos. So maybe that's what we'll do tonight. Okay, so just gonna line that up and then I'm gonna take this and fold it over onto itself so I can double check and make sure that that seam looks good and it's properly aligned and it is. Continue pressing down on that seam. Basically just building a box right now. Nothing too crazy. I'll open it up, check that tab looks good. And now we're gonna take and put some glue on this tab like so. I like to keep the tab at a 90 degree angle like this so that when I take my finger and spread that glue out, it doesn't hit this surface. Okay, it's just kind of a little tip there for you. And with this, since this is symmetrical, you can actually put this down flat, grab the other end, and it should match up and line up perfectly. And it does. Okay, I'm gonna press that down initially, give that a few seconds, and then I'll take it and fold it over onto that seam and press down. So now we've got the main structure almost done. Like that. Okay, seam looks good. Both seams look great. And we just need to close up the top and the bottom. Do one at a time. I'm just gonna do the bottom first. Move this out of the way. And we're gonna apply glue to these three tabs. Now remember what happened last time when we were gluing three tabs down. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the glue on the first tab so it doesn't dry out on me. And then I'll go here. Going a little bit heavier on the glue. And take that glue, spread it out to the very, very edge of the tab. You can feel it. You can feel if it's drying out or not. Now the first tab there is perfect this time. The consistency felt great. I'm gonna close it up, line it up with this side first. Make sure you get it all the way out to the edge. Nice and aligned. And then these two sides should just kind of fall into place. Okay, and we can actually pop that down on our surface and just kind of push from the inside to make sure that all three tabs are making full contact with the bottom. That will help us kind of strengthen this whole thing. Just pushing on the tabs from the inside. I'm gonna lift it up here in just a second and take a look at the seams and you know what that turned out pretty good that part there showing a little bit of a gap there this part here has got a tiny little gap actually that glue hasn't even completely set yet so i salvaged that uh, but i am going to clean this side up a little bit since that's the side that everyone's going to see and i'm going to put a little bit of glue right on the very edge of this guy here and just pop a little extra glue right into that little crevice there and press that down and hold it. All right, so everything looks great. I'm gonna flip the, uh, flip the box over here to the top and we'll just do the same thing we just did on the bottom. Again, make sure that you add a little extra glue on that first tab since it has a tendency to dry first, <laughs> obviously. And we don't want to have to spend too much time doing uh, extra work, cleaning up any gaps that we may have. Spread that glue out to the very edge. Okay, and then go ahead and close it up. Just line it up with the side opposite of this side first, the side closest to you. Get it all the way out to the edge. There we go. If you need to kind of nudge the sides in a bit, that's fine, it's expected. And there we go, just kind of keep pressing that down. Make sure that everything is nice and aligned. You can flip it over and then push down on the tabs from the inside, make sure that all those are making good contact as well. There we go, okay. Perfect, and my seams look pretty darn good. Probably should have kept pushing those down momentarily for a few extra seconds, but that's okay. 
And that looks good. Okay. All right. So the main structure is pretty much done here. Let's flip this over and and get the back in place. And what we want to do is we'll have the little flap here up at the top. Okay. So this part's going to get glued down right on the back. You do not want to put any glue on the actual door. We only want to put glue on the rest of this section on this piece. So let's do that. Let's get our glue flowing here. We would definitely, and actually, you know what, what we could do here is, uh, well, no, never mind. This is fine. I was going to say we can put it on the structure, but that may end up being somewhat problematic because we don't know where not to put the glue for the little handle that we have built into this. So that's okay. And I'm just putting this on my surface because it's a little bit easier. Get some glue right up to the, uh, the very edge of where the uh, score line is at the bottom, where the door opens and closes. Okay, you can kind of just put that on your surface. And this is going to go flush at the bottom and the sides and the top. And just continue pushing that down. If we need to kind of clean this up, that's fine. Don't worry too much about it. Just make sure that everything is nice and flush all the way around. And press a little bit there. You can take this and let's open this up. Get that out of there so that we can push around the inside part too. There we go. Okay, take a look at the very edges. If you have any little sections that maybe are not sitting flat, again, we've got our scrap piece of paper. You just take and put a little bit of glue right underneath that piece and press it down. And that side looks good. That side looks pretty good. You can add a little extra glue under there and press that down. <clears throat> Uh, also, let me grab my, I have some Velcro dots, and this is what we're going to use to keep the, um, keep the door open and closed. Um, this is actually, I should probably add this to our supply list on our app. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so you've got these little Velcro dots here, and I'm just going to cut one of them off. Just like that, just... Cut one off and peel the backing off of one side and we can put it right here and then peel the backing off of that. It's kind of sticky like that. And then we'll take it and close it, press down. Okay, and then what we can do, sticks to the paper. And now we've got them exactly where they need to be so we can open and close this. It'll stay nice and closed for us. Super cool. Okay. All right. So what's left? Uh, well, we've got to put the face of this thing on and that's going to go on like this. And with this, we can actually put glue on the main structure. Let me double check and make sure that that's accurate. I don't want to goof anything up. Yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> can actually put glue on this surface instead of having to worry about figuring out where to put it on that piece. You can literally put it on this entire surface here. Just try to keep the glue away from the windows so that we don't accidentally get some glue on the vellum. It's not going to look good if we do that. So you can throw a little bit in the center here, but just don't don't glob it on so that it squirts out and gets all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier with the glue around the perimeter. And just like we've done a few times now, we take and just kind of spread that glue out to the very edge, like so. Clean your finger off, grab this piece, <clears throat> and then we're just gonna match that up with the very bottom and the sides, and then everything else should just kind of fall into place magically. Okay, we can flip this over, open this up, and then you can push down from the inside as well. Definitely want to make sure that the perimeter and the sides are nice and lined up. I'd say that looks pretty good. Okay, so there we have it. All right, now 
Uh, the next thing is, well, we can actually take this thing and kind of put this on our base now, I think. I think we're kind of ready for that. So here's our base. Again, you do have two little markers here and the front of this guy is gonna line up, the corners here are gonna line up with this marker. So what I would do is I would just take and apply glue to the bottom of this. You can go kind of heavy with the glue here. No one's gonna see it. And then that way it'll stay nice and put for you. And then you can also take it and kind of spread that glue out to the very edge. We want it to be nice and flush all the way around, especially by the door there. Okay. Again, match it up with the two little markers there on our little platform. Get that nice and centered. You can also kind of just take a look at it visually, making sure that it's properly aligned. There we go. Okay, that looks good. We'll give that a few moments to set while, uh, well, this is where we kind of have fun with uh, all the decorating. Uh, there's a green handle that is for the door and that's going to go right here. So I do need to glue that down. I'm not sure why I didn't do that before. Probably just overlooked it. Okay. And just pop that right into place there. Just like that. Okay. So you can see that. And well, next we've got a couple things here. And this is where we're going to start using some foam squares to add some dimension to this. So our sign, um, this little piece here, which goes like that, this guy here, our green jalapenos, uh, those are all going to be foam squared. I guess you could, you can glow them down flat if you want. Uh, we're just trying to add some extra dimension to this. So I figured why the heck not. Um, use some foam squares. I'm going to grab some large ones and some small ones because obviously we've got different sized pieces here. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to flip this over and you're going to see the same sign on the back. I forgot to put the red piece uh, under the, uh, the tan piece here, which is why you see it on both sides, but that's okay. Yours is going to look like this with the red behind it. Okay. But that's okay. I'm going to put three foam squares on this guy. And let's peel those off. We'll get that in place first. Okay. I'll show you exactly where this needs to go. Uh, there are actually, there's some little markers here. There's two markers here and that's to help you with the positioning of this guy here. Just make sure that you get it centered. Okay. Let's see if I got that centered. Yeah, that looks good right there. Cool. That looks nice. Okay. Uh, we can take this little element here, flip that over. This is definitely going to use some small ones and I'll do four of them. One in each little section here. Again, you can glue this down flat if you want. Adding the foam squares is optional, but it'll definitely make it look way cooler just to give it some dimension. The points, you want them going north, south, east, west like this and just line those up right over that little hole there, that little circle. So there you have that. Now it's jalapeno time. Let's flip over our jalapenos and I think I'm going to definitely do one there, one there. And then the cool thing about these is you can actually cut them in half. So I'm just going to cut just going to cut four of them in half and I'll put one almost at the tip of our little jalapeno here. Not quite all the way. I don't want it to be seen. Okay. Let's peel the backing off of that. And all right. So these guys are kind of coming in like this. You can see there are a series of little score marks here to help you with the placement of our cool little jalapeno there. And then this one's going to go here. Just kind of line that up and press that down. There we go. That is sharp. I love this. This is cool. Okay. Then we've got this little piece. We'll flip that over and I think I could do, I'll probably just get away with three of them on this. 
We'll do one in the center to keep it nice and nice and uh, straight, I guess. I don't want it bending or curving. Okay, and that's gonna go right above the door on that little red section. Let's get that lined up nicely. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and now let's put our little walls in place here. Now these are actually gonna get glued to this guy here and you want that flush with the right hand side. Okay, like that. And all we need to do is just put a little bit of glue right along the bottom, like that. And let's pop that right on there, nice and flush with the very edge and the bottom, like so. There we go. Okay, we'll do the same thing with the other side. Just a nice line of glue. You can go a little bit heavier here, that's fine. Pop that right there, flush with the bottom and the left-hand side. There we go. Okay, that leaves um, a couple of cactuses here. And we're gonna take these. We've got two arms on one side, one arm on the other side. Um, we're gonna take the side with the two arms and place it on so that it's you know, going towards the center of the project. And we're actually gonna take, and I'm gonna put some foam squares on these. Uh, I'll do a large one on the bottom. Let me flip this over. I'll do a large one there. Again, you can glue this down flat if you want. Now you don't wanna go all the way up to the top here. I'd put one right about there. Uh, because some of this actually extends past the wall and then you won't have anything to <clears throat> you won't have anything to actually glue it to. So again, I've got the two arms on the left and you'll notice that we do have a little marker there to help you with the placement of this guy. Make sure the bottom of the little terracotta pot is flush with the bottom, just like that. And then we'll take this guy, same thing, look for that little marker. The pot should be flush with the base, standing up nice and straight. There we go, looking sharp. Uh, we also have, remember these sides here, we've got this little marker there for our flower. So we'll put that in place. Just a little dot of glue should do. Don't forget to put a little pearl or rhinestone or if you wanna do um, if you want to do some liquid pearls, I don't really like working with those too much. I feel like they're very inconsistent and I don't use them enough. They tend to dry out. And that one's going to go there like that. And then uh, we've got this little section here, this little piece. Okay. And the way that this works now is we're going to take and put glue on the tabs. Okay. And we're going to kind of push them into place here like that. I'm just gonna go right there like that. Okay, so let's just do one at a time. Go easy on the glue here. I'm actually gonna take my finger and kind of spread that glue out like that, so just to make sure that I'm covering everything. I probably should have done the bottom part before I spread that glue out, but that's okay. Just like that, okay, it's already getting really tacky, so I gotta, gotta get moving here and Again, just actually I think, I thought there were some markers on there, I guess not. Pop that down on your surface, on the roof I should say, and then the other ones up against the sign. Okay, so I'm putting this little piece down right now and uh, actually what I noticed that, I noticed that it's probably easier if you kind of push it up against the back of the sign first and then I'm gonna take and put a little bit of glue on a scrap piece of paper like this, and then just paint it underneath the bottom section. Because they're kind of fighting each other right now. So it's almost better if you get it up against the back of the sign first, and then get it down onto the roof. And just kind of hold that. You can actually pull the sign back a little bit, and it'll do the work for you. Okay, so. Just kind of holding it in place like that. There we go. 
give that a few seconds to set. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm actually just gonna do the same thing here. Okay. Now one side is a little bit longer than the other, so decide which side you want going against the sign and which side you want going against the roof to keep it consistent. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it's a 90 degree angle, so it's gonna work either way. But I'm gonna just, again, put this up against the sign first. I don't have any glue on the bottom tabs yet. Make sure it's nice and flush up against the roof. Push that up against the back. You can see how that's going on. It's just a nice little touch. Okay, give that a few seconds to set. And then grab your little scrap piece and throw a little glue on there. Actually going a little bit heavier on the glue there. Okay, that should be dry. We'll pop it right under there and just paint that glue on those tabs. Just like that. And then we can take and press that down and hold it. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. As you can see here, I just, I actually don't have my little LED lights in here, but uh, I just popped my phone in there and you can see how cool that is once it's all illuminated. You can even see the lights from the side. Very simple little piece, uh, definitely customizable. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do with this and how you guys incorporate it into your festivities and your holidays or whatever it may be. But uh, don't forget to take and um, add, you know, uh, a little bit of either a rhinestone or a pearl, especially on the flowers, on the cactus. Um, where else? Oh yeah, don't forget the little flowers on the sides. I think that's pretty much it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and visit us on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. Um, also, it'll help you kind of stay on top of the live videos that we've been doing recently as well. Uh, and also, if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it. And so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, or you can type in this little URL that you see here at the bottom of your screen. But either way, um, hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.